getting organized is an essential skill for anyone who is getting into the preparedness space. But when you get started, it can feel really overwhelming and a little bit daunting to understand like where to put things, how to store it, especially if you're living in a small space. You may have noticed that my background has changed just a little bit. And that's because my husband and I are splitting our time between our home in Colorado and our tiny house here in Oklahoma. This tiny house is only 234 square feet. And so moving back into this space combined with some questions I've received from some of the viewers, I really wanted to dive in to five simple strategies you can use to get organized in your prepping journey. So I get a lot of questions about how to stay organized, particularly for those of you who are maybe living in smaller spaces. I know that it can feel super challenging when you maybe have a small apartment or a condo or even a house where you don't have a lot of extra room like we do where we have a basement where we can store some stuff. And so I realized that sometimes just coming up with ideas on how to get more organized and use your space more efficiently can be really helpful. What you may not know is that I used to actually be a professional organizer and I would go into people's houses and help them get organized. And so this is one of those topics that is near and dear to my heart. And honestly, that just comes a little bit more naturally to me because I've kind of always been OCD and wanting to stay organized. So when we talk about getting organized, the first step is really just clearing out the extra clutter. And I know this can be challenging. Again, it can feel overwhelming because we tend to save a lot of stuff in our homes. When you get into prepping, you may realize that you have a lot of stuff in your house that you don't use on a regular basis. When we start prepping, the first thing we want to do is really kind of consolidate and get rid of all of the extra stuff that we don't necessarily need to keep. Now, as preppers, we like to accumulate things. We like to save things. And so please hear me. I don't want you to get rid of stuff that you feel like would be useful for emergency situations. We want to get rid of the stuff that maybe is just taking up space. Maybe it's something from an old hobby that you used to do, a sporting activity that you used to have that you really just don't do anymore, stuff you're saving from your kids who've maybe moved out 10, 15, 20 years ago. Those are great spaces to look at for your prepping supplies. So the first step is just clearing out the clutter. The second step to getting organized is really grouping like items. So again, when we start this prepping journey, what you're gonna realize is that you end up buying a lot of supplies that maybe fall into a certain category. Again, you know, I love thinking of things in terms of household goods, food, water, medical supplies, things of that nature. So when you start prepping, you wanna group your supplies together. And I will tell you the mistake that I made when I started. When I started, I just kind of had a big bin and I threw a lot of stuff in there and then I added and put some stuff in a closet and then I added and put some stuff in another closet and then I added and put some stuff in the basement. And as you can imagine, when I finally got around to organizing my stuff and grouping it kind of by category, I realized I had bought a lot of duplicates. And so one of the things that will help you is if you start grouping your prepping supplies as you go, you will be less likely to accidentally buy duplicates to buy things that you don't really need. So group those like items together. Once you've kind of sorted and you figured out what you have, you also know the space that you need to store those things. The third step is what I love to call basket bins and buckets. So again, once you have grouped supplies, it's really important to stay organized. And my go-to as an organizer, we're really like using bins and baskets and things like that because it helps keep everything contained. And again, that helps you know exactly how much space you need to find in your house to store something. So even here in a space as small as the tiny house, I use baskets and bins for a lot of our things. Now, a little bit differently in a space this small, sometimes your space is going to dictate what size bins and baskets you get. That is perfectly okay. Then you can figure out what to store in those spaces. So for instance, in this space, I have some baskets up here in the loft. And in those baskets, I have certain things stored, but I knew what size baskets would fit up there. And so then I only brought the things that would actually fit in those baskets and the bins. Same principle applies for getting organized with your prepping supplies. Either buy a bin or a basket that fits all of the supplies you have, or if you're really limited on space, figure out the largest basket or bin that you can use to store something in a given space and then fill it up to the brim. And again, you want those items to be similar in nature so that you know where to find stuff. And that brings me to labels. I absolutely love labeling everything that I use for prepping. It is just a great visual reminder for where things are. It also will help you really stay organized and just 
have confidence that you know where things are in an emergency situation. So label everything. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be a sticky note or a piece of painter's tape with Sharpie on it. That's what we use for all of our stuff in buckets. So it doesn't have to be high tech, but just label your things so you know exactly what you have. So I'd love it if you just did me a favor, drop your favorite storage location for your prepping supplies in the comments below. We will learn from each other and where we can store things. And I think that is super helpful. All right, the fourth is the most fun and kind of exciting, and that is just getting creative on storage space. Okay, so we're gonna talk through a few strategies that I love anytime I'm thinking about getting organized. The first overlooked spot is underneath beds. So I love under bed boxes where you can store things underneath beds. It just so happens that most beds, you will be able to store canned items and things like that in containers underneath your bed. And then you have access to them very easily. When I store stuff under my bed, I do, again, like to put those in containers for a couple of reasons. One, it's easier to pull those containers out and have access to everything underneath the bed. Two, it keeps anything that you're storing under there clean so you're not just collecting dust bunnies or if you have a dog like me, little fur bunnies, you are really being able to keep all of your supplies clean and readily accessible. So get a couple of those under bed boxes, either the fabric type or the plastic type, and you can store tons of stuff under your bed. Pro tip, if you use risers underneath the feet of your bed, you can actually lift your bed six to 12 inches in some cases to give you tons of additional storage space really without losing any functionality of your bed. If you buy a pretty bed skirt, it covers it right up and you don't have kind of an eyesore underneath your bed. Or if you buy really pretty boxes, that's great. Another option, you can do what we do and you can buy a bed that already has drawer storage underneath it for part of it. And then we use that space for prepping supplies in our master bedroom. The second place to look for things is just on the tops and the bottoms of closets. A lot of times we waste a lot of storage space on those shelves that are really high and down on the floor underneath our clothes. Again, find some bins and some baskets that fit right underneath and you can use a lot of that space. The floor of your closet is also a great place to store some extra cases of water potentially. So again, most of us have room to slide a case of water underneath our slacks or whatever's hanging on that bottom rack in your closet. So don't forget to look high and low in closets because usually we have wasted space in those rooms that we can definitely use to store stuff. Another idea is just to get furniture that doubles as storage. So as I just mentioned, our master bedroom set actually has drawers underneath our bed and so we use those for storage. They make things like coffee tables, TV stands, everything now has storage in it. So when you are looking at furniture, you wanna buy stuff that has maximum storage if you are trying to use every inch of your space. And the beauty of that is it still looks neat and clean. Most people don't know you have prepping supplies stored in that TV cabinet. They assume you have DVDs like normal people, but instead maybe you have all your medical supplies there. So using those spaces creatively is also another option. Now. The caveat with this is if you have all of those spaces crammed with stuff that you don't use all the time, you're not going to be able to use them to prepping, which leads us back to step number one, which is get rid of the clutter. And the last step, number five, is just track where you put stuff. So a lot of times, especially when we're in smaller spaces, we kind of need to spread things out because let's face it, we don't have enough room to store all of our water in one spot or all of our canned goods in one spot. That is completely okay. If you are breaking up the space where you are storing things, you just want to keep in mind where you are storing stuff. And here's the other thing is if you are the one doing the storage, so women, I'm definitely talking to you because I feel like we're the ones that go shopping a lot. We're the ones that like to sort things and store things and put them away. And so if you are storing things for your family, having a quick reference guide so that anybody else in your family can find what they're looking for is super helpful. Now I'll admit, I don't always do this. I don't always get it quite right. Those are just some of the strategies I love to use in smaller spaces. If you have a little bit more room, again, you can get even more creative. You can designate an entire room or an entire closet just for preparedness supplies. And that also allows you just to stay more organized. And then the last thing I'll just say on storage is if you get to a certain point where you feel like you are comfortable for the situations you are planning for, 
stop storing stuff. Yes, we talk about long-term storage on here. You know that I think more is better, but you also have to store what is comfortable for you. So don't press the limits of your house where you feel overwhelmed every time you walk in the door because you have prepping supplies stashed in every corner and in every surface. That is not what we're going for. We want our houses to be safe and quiet and a refuge for us. We don't want every surface crammed with prepping supplies falling out at us every time we open closet doors. So just kind of, you'll have to figure out the balance for yourself of using your space wisely and then also still having the supplies on hand that you need to make you feel comfortable. And everybody's situation is gonna look different and we're all going to have a different tolerance for what that looks like for us and our family. And if you're finding this information useful, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you never miss one of our videos here at Preparedness. Mm -hmm.